This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're looking at the Dell Latitude 6430U. It's sort of a, the Ultrabook cousin to the Latitude E series. This one is indeed on the heavy side for an Ultrabook, but still very slim, very light as far as business Ultrabooks go with the 14 inch display. It's 0.82 inches thick. And you can see it has a taper here, not unlike the Samsung taper. Magnesium casing, very rugged, nice soft touch finish, great backlit keyboard. We're going to look at it now. The Dell 6430U is available now on Dell's website and you see it's a 14 inch notebook and nice looking. We've got that kind of soft touch grippy kind of finish going on here. Dell logo, not too big and blaring like it is on the S XPS line for those of you who don't like that. Little indicator lights over here let us know our, if we're sleeping or not, charging, that kind of thing. Useful to have. Small but robust hinges that are metal reinforced. In fact, the whole thing is supposed to be pretty rugged according to Dell. We have a magnesium frame, metal running all around. Bottom panel is metal as well. It's past 14 mil spec tests. They don't say exactly which ones, but it's supposed to be pretty darn rugged. But it's good looking too. This is not like the Dells of old. Some of the older Dell business notebooks, well, they were kind of pudgy, chunky. This guy is definitely good looking in an understated business kind of way, I grant you that, but I like the contrasting silver line here with the black finish. The contour line, again, a lot like the Samsung Ultrabooks, but still good looking. While we're, while we're taking a look here, you can see we have a USB 3.0 port with charging capabilities. Gigabit Ethernet is here, our lock slot. And on the back, plenty of ventilation. We have our eSATA interface, and that plugs into the external DVD drive. And we have full-size HDMI here. On this side, that's where our power connector is, VGA port, another USB 3.0 port, headphone jack, and your wireless on-off switch. Nice to have that hardware wireless on-off switch. And underneath, on this side here, you can really see the contour of the casing, there's a full-size SD card slot. It has a blank in there, so you just don't see a ugly hole. And if we take a look at the bottom here, yes, even though it's in name, an Ultrabook, this is a 3.7 pound computer, a little heavy for that, but still removable battery, something that you're just not going to see on an Ultrabook. You slide that slide open and you can pull out the battery. In fact, we'll do that now. Take that out, and this is the 6 cell battery. You can get it with a 6 cell 60 watt per hour battery or a 3 cell 36 watt per hour battery. I would definitely go with this one. Notice that the ribbon cable for our trackpad is exposed over here. That's a little bit scary, so be careful of that if you take your battery out. And there are just two screws here that hold this plate on, and you can access the internals for upgrades. And we're going to open that so you can see that. Just a standard Phillips head screw, small one. And these are the two little screw holes marked B, if you're going to do this yourself. Take out the SD card blank first. And there we have our internals. Two RAM slots here, standard size DIMM slots, 1600 MHz DDR3 RAM installed here. You can order this with two, four, eight gig DIMMs pre-installed. This right here is our MSATA. SSD drive is 128 gig Samsung PM830 drive. That's a great fast drive, so happy to have that. There's also a 256 gig option and a 64 gig option. We don't recommend 64 gigs, you just don't get much space. This is an Ultrabook in name, so it runs on Intel ULV CPUs. You can get it with a Core i3. The Core i3 base config with a 64 gig SSD starts at $900. Ours is a Core i5 with 8 gigs of RAM and the 128 gig SSD an Intel Wi-Fi dual band with wide eye and that one sells for about mm, almost thirteen hundred dollars you can go up to a core i7 over here we have an empty slot and that's for our full-size 3G 4G you can HSPA plus or an LTE module in there that's optional half height wireless card right there there's our Intel module and that's about it inside so it's nice you can actually access this stuff and upgrade some of the internals charger this comes with is reasonably compact, not too big. An Ultrabook really doesn't need a serious capacity large charger. And optional is this eSATA interface, plugs into the back and the combo USB eSATA port. 
optical drive, DVD writer, you can just get a DVD drive, and this is modular, so if you push in this little lever here, you can actually pull out the mechanism and say you want to get a, a caddy for a hard drive instead, you could do that. The notebook comes with a 1366 by 768 TN panel, no IPS here, no super duper viewing angles, no extreme brightness. Uh, about 200 nits of brightness is maximum for this, so if you're going to use it a lot outdoors, keep that in mind. The good thing, though, is that this is an anti-glare display or a matte display, basically, so there's no reflections here to, to have to combat in bright light. Still, not a strong selling point to display on this model, and for those of you who actually want to use Windows 8 with touch, it can be a drawback because you're going to have to use the Alps trackpad instead. One good thing, though, the Alps trackpad here, lovely trackpad. And you can see they're going with the Lenovo-style pointing stick over here and with the dual buttons top and bottom. Nice keyboard backlit, sculpted keys, good separation, nice tactile feel, oversized backspace key, shift key, and so on. Definitely a pleasure to use. FN key to control things like your brightness and your multimedia functions up here. This is where our power button is. We've got touch sensitive volume controls right here, wireless indicator, hard drive indicator, and speaker grills for the stereo speakers. Also, a kind of soft touch magnesium coated product here, durable, nice, does not get hot. It's a, it's a core i5 ULV here. Any of the core i5s are not going to get all that hot, and this is thick enough, too, that there's enough room around the hot internal, so you're just not going to get burned when you touch this ever. You can see there's a nice little cutout over here. It makes it easier to lift up the lid and close it. It opens and closes with a satisfying quality sound. Opens up with one hand. Stiff but not too stiff to do. The hinge feels just as strong as it's supposed to be, and you can open this guy up quite wide, all the way flat. Something you used to see on ThinkPads, well, you've got it here now, too. How often you need to use it like this, I don't know, but obviously you have a whole lot of leeway here as to what angle you can use a display at. In terms of color gamut, you're looking at about, oh, 55% of Adobe sRGB, so this is not graphic professional's dream, at least not the internal panel. Of course, you can use this with an external HDMI monitor if you want a better quality. And it's also available with your choice of Windows 7 or Windows 8. Still at this point, that's neat for those of you who just don't want the, the whole Windows 8 experience, especially for a non-touch business-oriented machine like this. You can get it with Windows 7 or obviously what we have here, Windows 8 64-bit professionals, what we've got installed on ours. Dell tells us they have a 1600 by 900 option, though I haven't seen it on the U.S. website yet for a higher resolution panel. And at 14 inches, I would recommend it. 1366 by 768, well, you know, it's easy on the eye, certainly. Everything is big and large, but I wouldn't mind a little bit more screen real estate here in desktop mode, a little bit sh more sharpness to my fonts. Our review unit has a 1.8 gigahertz Intel Core i5-3427U CPU. Again, you can get with the Core i3 a Core i7 also, though we generally don't recommend the Core i3. We have 8 gigs of RAM and R's, and you saw that that was two 4 gig DIMMs installed, that 128 gig Samsung SSD drive. Scored 5007 on PC Mark 7, that's quite a good score. That's at the top end of Ultrabooks with fast solid state storage and ULV CPUs. And you can see our Windows Experience Index here, our score is on a scale of 1 to 9.9. .9. The processor is 7.1, so that's a little bit faster than the Core i5 1.7 GHz 3317U. We've been seeing a lot of Ultrabooks. This one's a teeny bit faster. Instead of 6.9, it's at 7.1. Memory score is quite well. It's 7.5. Often we see 5.9 for that score. Dual channel RAM really does help here. Desktop graphics performance is 5.8. 3D business graphics is 6.5. And this data transfer is 8.1, so good, healthy scores overall. And it is a fast performer. It feels responsive. It can handle software development, obviously, office tasks, email, social networking, full HD video playback, though you've only got a 720p screen here, 1080, unless you're going to be using that HDMI port. Well, probably not so much of a point to that, but it can handle it fine. And in fact, it can handle some light 3D gaming. Even though the latitude is a business line, we all want to have fun sometimes, don't we? If you install World of Warcraft on this and leave it at native resolution and go with low settings, you can get mid-30s for frames per second. So that's actually pretty playable. Likewise, games like uh, Civ 5 are going to play fine on this, Left 4 Dead 2. Sorry, no Crisis 3 on here, and I wouldn't go with the latest Call of Duty Modern Warfare either. You have a variety of Wi-Fi options on this. 
Ours has the Intel Centrino Advanced N6205, and that's 802.11bg and dual band Wi-Fi with wide eye support. You can also upgrade for not too much more money to Intel Centrino Ultimate 6300N, or you can go with Dell's own Wi-Fi module. Machine has gigabit Ethernet, also you got Bluetooth inside, and as I said, you can get optional 3G or 4G LTE with this when you order it from Dell. Speakers actually sound pretty good on this laptop. Now we're trying out a 1080p high quality MPEG-4 trailer on it right now. Really, it's capable of handling anything you throw at it in terms of video to 1080p, no problem. So it plays just fine. Uh, again, not the most bright and stunning of screens, but it gets the job done. Dell business machines do not come with bloatware, so we're pretty happy with that. We have our office starter trial edition right here that you can run or delete as you see fit, depending on what you've already got for your office solution available. We have Cyberlink Media Essentials on here, and that's pretty much it, other than Dell management software, which is pretty capable stuff for managing your computer and keeping it up to date. The keyboard is spill resistant, by the way, so Dell is really just going after Lenovo really hard and quick there between their lovely keyboard designs and their integrated trackpad and things like the spill proof design. So as a business machine, it's got a lot to offer there. And the matte display and actually the lack of a wide viewing angle are pretty good for airplane privacy too. Still, we'd like to see them put a higher quality panel on this in the next revision, something a little bit brighter and sharper looking. With the 6-cell battery, which is what we have in here, and of course it looks nice and trim, that's not the bulging, optional, nasty battery, that's just your standard flat-fitting-in battery, battery life has been quite good on this. If you're, if you're doing Windows 8 and you don't have a touchscreen, it seems like battery life is always going to be better, and in this case, we've been going up to 7 hours on a charge. Now that's what brightness set to 50%, which I find just barely tolerable, because this is not a very bright display. And with Wi-Fi on and active, doing web browsing, writing in MS Word, and doing some social networking and email, if you tax it more heavily with video playback, with a software development or Photoshop, image editing, or certainly if you're doing video editing, you'll get shorter run times, maybe you know, down to five or something like that. But it's still an Intel Core ULV CPU, which means low power. It has Intel HD 4000 graphics. There is no dedicated graphics option. So you've got a very power frugal machine here and in a... 14 inch frame, so there's plenty of room to have that ample battery. It's a pretty dense cell. By the way, this supports Dell's quick charge, so you can get up to like 75% charge from nearly empty in about an hour. Very handy if you just need to charge up before you jump on the airplane. You can do that. The machine has built in microphones up top and a one megapixel webcam that really didn't inspire us much in our tests. Things were kind of blocky and washed out looking. Not the best webcam we've seen on a notebook computer. So who's this for? Well, obviously it's a latitude. So Dell aims this at small business and large business users. It doesn't mean anybody out there might not find a use for it. It is relatively compact and light. And what the, the, the heavier weight gets you versus a three-pound Ultrabook is a non-sealed design. You can actually take the battery out. You can access and replace things inside, which is pretty darn nice, too. Certainly in terms of keyboard, it's very much a, a business user and a, anybody who types a lot dream for a keyboard. Not just that it's spill resistant, it's durable, all that kind of thing, but really lovely to type on right up there with Lenovo. And again, this machine really competes with Lenovo offerings. We're happy that it's available with both Windows 7 or Windows 8, your choice there. So for those of you who are just saying no to touchscreens and no to Windows 8 right now, particularly businesses, that makes this still a viable option. Price isn't bad. It's a little bit pricey. Really, I, I know I'm harping on this screen, but I'd like to see a better screen for something that runs from $900 to $1,500 or $1,600. And again, as configured, ours is about almost $1,300 or so. But other than that, business machines do tend to cost more. You're, you're paying for that ruggedness, the high-quality materials, the metal casing, the Intel Wi-Fi that's inside, all that kind of stuff. Not, not, not complaining too, too much. So that's the Dell Latitude 6430U. It's available now. And if you're looking for something that's rugged, yet not chunky, ugly, nasty looking, certainly the Dell is it. And for the price, you, you get a good deal for the money here. You get top quality internal components, something we usually expect from Dell and we get here. Really good keyboard. The only thing we're not so hot on is the TN panel display. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review of the Dell 6430U. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that like button too.